Morning with TT and my special guest today. Jeezy is here. Yes, one of yes. My favorite people to talk to. Yes, yes. Good to see you again. It's nice to see you as well. Your new book is out. Adversity. For sale. For sale. You gotta right. believe. Make sure you tap into the new book. Yes, yes. Um, so you start the book off with some um four successful things that people need. Mm. Crystal clear vision, mm -hmm. a plan to reach your goal, mm -hmm. the discipline to execute the plan, and then the willingness to make the necessary sacrifices along the way. Yes. So in reading this book, there's a lot of things that I thought I knew about you. Okay. Because I've been a fan of your music, right? Um, but I didn't know too much about your family background and your okay. father mm -hmm. being, um, I believe, a Marine. Yes. So that kind of like set the foundation for you, or did it not? Like just to have that discipline well, in the household. Well, yeah, definitely, because I, my dad was definitely like disciplined. He was, you know, he was weightlifter and he was a marine marine. He wasn't like like he was like a marine marine. He really believed in the lifestyle. <clears throat> but what it was was being living in different countries when I was younger. Um, just gave me a different palette, right? So when my parents divorced and I had to move back to the hood with my mom and my grandmother, I immediately knew that that's where I didn't want to stay, you know, because I had been there before, but it was fun because you popping in and you popping out. But having to be there for real and kind of go through everyday life immediately made me want to so shift. So your parents were living together, yes. married, yep. and as a military kid, you traveled across the world yeah. because your dad would... Have, like most military people. be stationed in different, different places. places. Yep. Right? So you have this beautiful family dynamic. Right. And then as a young man, your parents divorce. Correct. And then you go back to a lifestyle that you necessarily wasn't full time familiar with. You understood it, but that's not what you were living in that moment in your life. Well, no, because it was, you know, my, both of my parents came from the same place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my dad being in the military was the highest life we ever lived, right? But that's only like base housing, but it's where we're stationed at. They right. gave me like a, oh, there's a beach. Oh, there's this, there's that. Right, so when I went back to the hood, I'm like, yo, there's beaches out there. You know, my mom was like, what are you, like what, a beach, palm trees? So I knew all that stuff existed, but you know, it was hard to explain that to people who just saw the same thing every day and only saw that on TV, right? But I'm like, I gotta get back to that because that's what I know, right? And my that's palette was different. You had that, though. Yeah, because no, of course. Imagine most kids coming right. from that environment who never saw anything outside right. of that world. Right. That's very difficult for them to see themselves differently when that's right. what they know. Well, the good thing is I knew both sides. So even as a youngster, like, I used to go, you know, my grandmother's house, my auntie's house. So they was all still in the hood, right? So... We, we we knew that, but we knew that we were the family that was, you know, traveling, mm -hmm. right, if you will, and staying in different places, right? So when we came home, it was always just fun, right? But then when you get there and it, it's not fun anymore because you got to stay there, it's different, you know, because my mom and my dad divorced. So now basically I, I, I become the man of the house at a young age, right, which automatically draws me to the streets because my mom um, she's a little you know she she changed if I would say because she didn't like my dad so I look just like my dad so oh, that so made right? yeah your relationship between you and your mother changed because yeah. you were a mirror of your dad correct which reflect pain to her right so when she saw you it triggers and trauma. Yeah, her, yeah. And, and I didn't know the words trigger and trauma then, but I understand it now, so I definitely forgave her. But, um, which made me go to the streets because that's where I got the most love. And that's why I felt appreciated. Yeah. And like I belonged. And validated right? as a young man. Right. right? Cause it was, Cause men need that. It was the homies, they were yeah. showing me love and, you know, just, it, it was, it was like, okay, well I don't have a family at the house, but I got a family here. And that's how I kind of started. And I would just, you know, but the thing was, I was always a thinker, right? I was just, I mean, it's just always been in me. And I've and I always been a visionary and a, and a disruptor. So when as things would happen, I would be the one that everybody would gravitate to. to, to what do we do? But Because you can figure it out. Right. And, and what I was doing was I was learning through music. 
that was a lot of where my knowledge was coming from because I was like not just listening to Tupac, I'm not just listening to Cash Money and these guys, I was actually studying what they was doing, if that makes sense. And I was listening to the words like the gospel, you know what I'm saying? So I would learn things and then when I'm sitting in the room, everybody like, what do we do? And my mom, like Pac said, you know, I'm not telling them that's where I got it from, but I'm just using that knowledge that I have because that's the only moral compass I had, which made me like, you know, just the leader in all the situations, even when I deal with older, older people. Because what I learned early is that when people get into situations, they can't think clearly when when everything's distressed. You I'm, know, I'm right, but I'm my most comfortable when things are out of whack. Yeah. I can handle that. So you say you're most comfortable when things are in disarray and stress. Right. Is that because you've learned to adapt or it's because it's your coping mechanism? Well, yeah, it's definitely a coping mechanism. Um, just growing up and, you know, just going through a lot of the trauma that I went through, I just, l just understood how to th slow things down and remove my emotions from them, right? Mm -hmm. But that helps me in business today, like, because I can go sit down with these corporations and these companies, and quite naturally, when things don't go right, you know, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Me, I just sit there and I go, okay, well, we just, we're going to do this, right? Because I'm thinking I have clarity, yeah. right? Because I'm balanced. Yeah. But, you know, and I don't want to compare the two, but I've been in so many situations where you say, like, it might be a shootout in the club or something, right? Mm -hmm. People panic. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm calm, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, all right, what can I do to help people? Yeah, you know, you, you get into that, you tap into something that's uh, almost like a superpower. Yeah, but it's almost like you know, I, I think about people first, yeah. right, before I think about myself. So I've been in situations like I remember one time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he's, you know, but Cam Newton. We went to hung out one day, uh -huh. and and we was uh, in my in uh, uh, Charlotte for like CIAA weekend or whatever. We go mm -hmm. out. And I take him with me, so he's not accustomed to these environments or whatever. And this, and this incident happens, and everybody just, you know, freaks out, falls. And, you know, he's not a small guy. Yeah. So I remember me like looking for him and helping him get up, and it helping some girls get up and helping people get up. But if you're looking from the outside, you like, yo, Jesus is actually in here like a firefighter or some yeah. shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but that's my first mind because when things go left. You know, I, I just get right. I don't really know what that comes from, but I do know that it is definitely a coping mechanism. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. In this book, you share so much of yourself um, with, with regards to your come up in the game, mm. um, marketing into becoming the snowman. Right. Um, you shared so much about the dark periods of your life mm. with the trial and mm. everything that mm. um, you went through with that. And people can pick up the book, um, Adversity for Sale, to really dig deep into into Jeezy's story. Um, it's very, uh, um, it must have been very liberating for you to be able to just be your authentic self in this book and share so much of yourself. Mm. Uh, was it, was, it? It was therapeutic, therapeutic for the most part. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, again, it was a lot of trauma that I had to figure out you know, how to deal with that I thought I had got past, but I didn't. Um, but it was also, it, it was, it was, it was humbling because you got to really think about it. A lot of the stuff um, that I went through, um, it was, it, it's not normal, right? But, but it is. But we normalize it. Right. Right? Because right. we, we either think that um, it's okay, we don't see nothing different, this right. this happens to everybody. Like, Well, well that's the thing, you know, I talk about even in the book, I just took that mentality of um, I'm just glad it's not me. Yeah. You know, and I did that for a long time. But you don't you don't grieve and mourn and, 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 you know, just get past things the way you should, so all that stuff builds up. And when I was writing the book, you know, of course, I was just like, you know, it was just a lot of moments where I was like, damn, but what really hit me is when I had to read the book for the audio version, mm. because it's not like you know you're just reading you know to yourself like you like you know you like just reading in your yeah. in your head like you have to actually act these things out and you know and, and the temperament of it and it was just like you know even when I was talking about like Shakir Stewart you know when he passed 
you know, I, I had to think back to how I laid in the bed two weeks behind that because mm-hmm. I just didn't understand it. Yeah. You know, it didn't make sense, right? But as I started to educate myself on, you know, those types of... Grief. Not even just grief, like why somebody would harm themselves, right? Yeah. And I just started to understand. I'm going like, oh, like this is a because you know as a black man you don't you don't you don't hear this. You're like we're too busy trying to, you know, stay alive. Yeah. And then you're like, what can make somebody do that? And 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 I love my brother. Like nothing against him, but he really made me look at life different when that happened. Yeah. Like I, I'm like, yo, I gotta take care of myself. I gotta take care of my people. I gotta actually reach out to my friends that are strong. Yeah. And make sure they're okay. And make sure they're okay. Yeah. Because you just never know what somebody's going through. But right. but what was interesting to me is while reading this story, reading your journey, is how much healing you had to do to yourself to even be a better businessman oh, for sure. and a better husband and a better father. Right. Um, I want to I want to speak to you about that process, right. like because first you have to acknowledge, hey, I have a problem, right. even though I'm Jeezy to the outside world and right. I'm so successful, but right. inside you're dealing with all of these traumas and. Mm. And loss and mm. hustle mm. and trying to survive the game. Mm. But once you dealt with it, now you're at this point where you can really be Jeezy to the level of right. what your highest potential is. Well, well, the first thing I would say is it was a point where I just started putting myself first, right? Because I was always taking care of my mom, my sister, my family, my homies, the this, the that. And, you know, you just get to a point where you got to really put yourself first and what that really happened for me is when the incident happened on the Wiz Khalifa tour and I got locked up in LA and I, people didn't do what I thought they were supposed to do for me, right? Mm-hmm. So that just left me in a place where I was upset, you know, I was frustrated and I was just like, yo, you gotta take care of you. And that was a big part of my journey. But the biggest thing I would say is just like becoming a better human being first before anything else. Because I tell anybody karma is real. Because mm-hmm. I did a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? People did a lot of things to me, but that didn't make it right. And when I started to understand that, you know, it's never too late to turn the curve, and I started doing work on myself because I just had to understand why I was like the way that I was, and I started to understand that a lot of the habits and things that I picked up were based on survival because mm-hmm. I was trying to survive. But mm-hmm. it was up into the recession that I figured out when the, when I started writing the recessions when I first felt like a superstar. Yeah. Anything before that, I was it was, it was a blur. Cause wow. I thought I was going to prison. I, I was losing homies left and right. Like it, it just. And, and even it, though outside to a fan like myself, right. it looked like you was at the height oh, of. I was, I was at the part of the lowest moment of my life. Wow. Lowest lowest. Bearing that, there. bearing all of that. Bearing all that, you know, just my vices, how I was coping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My mom and my father, they, 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 and my mom's family, they, they really drink, right? And, and, you know, so at a young age, like it was drinking was cool until you like drinking all day. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's cool because it's Chris Dial and it's this and that, and you ain't taking care of yourself. So and women? Not, yeah. And you, if you're not taking care of yourself um, health wise, right? You can't even make clear decisions, right? Yeah. And you're not taking care of yourself health wise, you're not even at your fullest potential. And it wasn't until I started recording the recessions when I started to, like, you know, be serious about my health and get, get myself, you know, I wasn't drinking water. You know, yeah. now I own water, but yeah. I wasn't even drinking water back then, which was, you know, it, it sounds crazy, but yeah, I was Chris Dial and Waffle House. I was 260. Yeah. You know, and just out here just living. But this is the thing. I, I was already prepared for the end. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was planning for it. Yeah. Which was um subconsciously or consciously? Consciously. Oh wow. And 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 which made me separate from my family as well. Like, you know. Made you separate from reality. And, and my mother and yeah. my sister and you know, my father and all my cousins because I was preparing for the worst. Right. And I didn't want it, whatever it may be if I you know, you didn't want to allow happiness in because you didn't know right. what the end result was already going to be. You was already conditioning yourself for that. Right, because two things. The first thing is you don't want to be too close. If something happened to you, it breaks them, right? Yeah. And then you're thinking if I get picked up and whatever's going on, I don't want to be in a position where I'm thinking any different about what I got going on. So, I, you know, a lot of people go in there, it, it hits you, you're not going to see your family for 20 years. Like, you know, that makes you think different. You say things you probably shouldn't say. So I figured if I distance myself from all that then it was all on me mm-hmm. so if I had got you know you know locked up or whatever 
it's just me, and I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't got, I, I'm not close to my mother. Yeah. Right. Because we already had our Issues. things, but yeah. now, and I'm not close to my father. Because it's just like I'm a grown man. I'm out here doing my thing. I'm not close to my sister because we're not talking every day like we used to. Because I'm already preparing for, for what's worst. going to happen. Yeah. And right when I started writing the recession is when I was like, hold up, I'm not, I'm alive, I'm not in jail, I'm free, I got a career, like I gotta figure this out. And that's when I just, you know, Tapped snapped and, and, and everything from that point was starting to do the work and, and, and getting better. But then when that incident happened on the Wiz Khalifa tour, that took me like 10 steps back, mm-hmm. right? Cause now I'm back drinking and now I'm mad and you know, because if you knew me before this, like, you probably couldn't get three words out of me in this yeah. interview. Oh, no, no question. Absolutely. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because it was, was almost gar- like, a, it's like, it, it, like, it felt like an interrogation. Yeah, you was guarded. You yeah, was absolutely 1, 000, 1, guarded. So how important is it, before you can even get to these principles that you write about, to love yourself as a black man? Right. Because I think a lot of people don't talk about how important it is for black men to ultimately love themselves. Right. And how does that, and what does that look like? Well, it looks like when you, for, so, so, for, for like, success is when it's for you, and significance is when it's for other people. I'm most fulfilled when I can add value, right? Or I can tell you about what I've been through, and it helps you, and you go, hey, man, you know, that really touched me when you went through that. I went through that, too. So for me, it's just like I really started to understand what my purpose was, and that's how I was able to start to understand why I need to love myself, right? Mm -hmm. Because before that, you know, I I don't even think I knew what the word meant, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, because coming from where we come from, and I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of stuff that I went through, my emotions was gone. Like, they they were no longer there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I didn't feel anything for anyone or anything, right? You know what I mean? Because... Once you lose so many people back to back to back to back to back to back. You start to numb your feelings. You're numb. Yeah. Like, you don't even, you know, you just, you know, okay. You know, I just lost a homie last night. Somebody called me. I'm just like, you know, what can you do? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and my and my emotions, that got to a point where I don't I don't feel like they worked. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, yeah. you know, and what made me, you know, really swip the, fish the swip was, uh, fish, flip the switch was, that if I could fix or, you know, contribute to the next generation on the things that I know so that I can, you know, save lives and save people time and save people energy, that's when I started to feel like, you know, there was a value there. Because Mm -hmm. other than that, who cares about a kid who made it from the hood that can make a couple songs? And make nope. millions. Of, so you are no longer being fulfilled by the rapper Young Jeezy's success or the success at all. You started to love yourself when you really started leaning into your purpose and yeah. discovering what that was. And for you, it was like, let me touch these kids who right. come from my environment. Right. right. So when you talk about putting in the work um, and you actually break a lot of that stuff down in, mm-hmm. in the book... Briefly, what does that work look like? You know, because um, like I know it's a lot. It, yeah, <laughs> no, it, was, it was keeping it real with yourself and, and just going, because, you know, I used to go in the rooms and, you know, I used to feel like I got to know everything. I got to be, I got to be, I got to talk more in there. But now it's like, no, you got to listen. You got to learn. Like, it's, it's all about evolution. Every day I just want to learn. I just want to become better. And that's what just gave me that clarity of of what it's like to be someone who strives, you know, and, 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 and is serious. Like, because people, you have to take yourself serious. Like, I me, mean, I'm serious about evolution. Like, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just, it, it could be no book. Right. <laughs> I mean, you could be talking. It's like, no, you 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 have to evolve or you die. Yeah. Either way, right? Yeah. And you looking at somebody who's escaped this millions of times, but it don't even just stop as you being a successful star. Mm-hmm. Look at Nipsey Hussle. Look at Pop Smoke. Like it doesn't stop there. Yeah, it's like it's it's like a a real life thing, and you got to understand what type of energy you embody, and and what type of path you want, right? Yeah. And the only thing that matters to me is to be what Pop couldn't be, right? Mm-hmm. He can't. He 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 couldn't get to the point where he was of my age, and he can tell you what he went through because he would be so much more wiser, right? Big same way. So it's almost like once we put ourselves in the artist box. It's no different from the streets, and the streets 
is music these days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So who's leading the way? And that's why I always say, like, the OG shit is dead. Like, I don't even understand that. But a big homie, I could do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can relate to you as a big brother and be like, yo, man, listen. And I, and I try to, you know, and, like, I ain't perfect by far. But I try to talk to a lot of the, you know, a lot of cats that call me and be asking me questions. I'll be just keeping it real. I'll be like, yo, because a, a lot of people just don't mentally get it. You know, mm-hmm. like, even versus that wasn't about us. Yeah. It's about them. Like, that's not about, uh, you know, it was, it was whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, you know, some somebody got to show lead by example, example somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something has to happen to have a shift. And, and, and if not, it's going to continue to be the same cycle. And it's all good until it's somebody you know. Right. It's until it impacts it's, your life. Yeah, it's all good to it's somebody that you cared about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now you sitting here and you're going like, damn. And I think, too, shedding light on a lot of the things that we've been through. Because I'm quite sure a lot of people are going to read this book and not even know that these things were either something you can even fathom. Right? They're, they're not going to... It's, it's, it's going to sound unbelievable. Man, when I read that book, <laughs> when I read this book, when, when I got the pre-copy of this book and I started to deep dive into it, I said, wow, it's so much of me in this book. Mm. Like, so much of, like trauma and like that I think that people are going to benefit from because sure. it starts with healing first mm. right and being truthful to yourself and really be honest about where you sit in this moment in your life mm-hmm. you know where you at where I'm at with this person at, is where you at in your moment in your life and be in that truth of it right, right. and then you can start the, the steps to heal right. and then what, what, what comes with healing is power right and then the universe and God will start to open up things that you are now capable of having and deserving, 100%. but now you can handle it and channel right. it better, right? Well, well, even like when we was talking offline and you were saying, you know, the things that you had coming up, imagine how that's going to affect your listeners. Yeah. Because you, you, have, you have the influence to impact, you know, millions, right? right. But, but you're taking a position as a leader to better yourself. And then when you come back, you got more to give, right? Because you got to know there's a million young ladies out here listening to you every day that want to be like you and want to strive like you, but you're becoming better so you can give them that information because they're going to respect it from you. And plus, you know how to communicate it to them so it's, 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 it's simple, right? Because a lot of these things aren't simple, like financial literacy. It's not simple. But if, you, if you're able to get the information and you're able to put it back in the culture, and people understand it's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. just like there's this. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like it's no different than buying a house than buying work. It's the same <laughs> shit. Like, I swear to God. I mean, you know what I mean? But without the, the jail time. Yeah. But once you look at it like that, you got to go, wow, hold it. You know, and, and for me, you know, somebody else, you know, helped me understand it. Mm. And that that just made me feel that much more closer you know to where i was trying to go and it made me excited about telling my culture that this can be done right yeah and the calls that i get you'll be surprised yeah you know because they don't even know where to start right yeah. and and i'll be like yo just do this do that so many people call you and it's like yo man i just want to just thank you for changing my life bro like nobody showed me about like wealth yeah right but just imagine that though like, yeah. if I hadn't took that step, I couldn't even yeah. give somebody those gems. That's why I say, you know, we have to give ourselves a pat on the back when we're out here trying to be better because it's not about us. You know, you're going to get the knowledge, but it's like, what you going to do with it? Yeah. That's why I say you got to live full and die empty because you can't take it with you. Mm, <laughs> like I love said. that. Live full and <laughs> die, die empty. empty. Yeah, because it's like, you know. You got to pass it down. Yeah, Generations. The most, the most wealthiest place in the world is the, is the graveyard. You know, yeah. people take their ideas, their dreams, their goals, everything wow. with them. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, nah. The most it, wealthiest place is the graveyard. Yeah, for sure. And it just, wow. be, you know, because you got to really think about it. Like, you don't want to leave here with regrets. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't the best version of yourself, you know, and you took these things with you because you feel like nobody wanted to know or you didn't know how to explain. I mean, I think about that every time I hear the stage. You're like, you know, 20, 30,000 people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they're listening to you tell your story or, 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 or perform your records about the adversity and the things you went through. Imagine how that resonates with them when they leave. Everybody probably going through something. 
I remember the first time I saw you on tour um, when you went on tour with Jay-Z and um, how crazy the crowd went for you. No, you know? it was, it was and, and, and even in that, you know, shout out to Hove, just like, you know, you're from the South, you know what I'm saying, and you grew up listening to Jay-Z, and now you're on a tour with him, and you got more records with Jay-Z than he has with Big, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and New York culture is embracing you, you know what I'm saying, Philly culture is embracing you, um, and you're moving around the world, and you're learning all these things, because I hadn't been on a tour of that magnitude. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm peeping game. I'm like, hold up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that, that that's that thing. It's like you got to get somebody that you respect and you believe has that it factor, and you got to pour into them. Yeah. Because they're going to pour into you. Right. And then yeah. you're going to continue, and that's how it goes. That's yeah. how we pour into each other. Because I yeah. love to walk in the room. You're not going to just box me in as no rapper. Yeah. You're like, we get to talking business. I'm right there. We get to talking real estate. I can't wait. Yeah. You know, and I love to be in Atlanta. Those guys like, oh, I'd be like, yeah, well, you know, I own this whole street. <laughs> <laughs> I own all of Atlanta. Right, right. <laughs> but, but, that, but, you know. But, I mean, and I can, and, but the greatest part is that, I, that you are willing to say, I can, I own this, but I can also show you Correct. how to do it too. And and the, and if I'm honest with you, me and my sister and my mother grew up in a trailer, a two bedroom trailer that I paid thirty five hundred dollars for. That wasn't bigger than this room. Wow. That's on God. Wow. Thirty five hundred dollars, ten wow. trailer, like a ten. Like if the wind blows, it might go with it. Wow. And we grew up in that. Well, until my mom uh, kicked me out or whatever. But so to own dirt, to me is like like the biggest goal ever because this is something that this is this is this is something that is a part of my legacy and this is something that my kids and my family and, and all the people that I love are gonna own, you know, and their yeah. kids and so yeah. on and so forth because all we need is some type of a cushion, right? Yeah. And we didn't come in with that. Just imagine that. Like And you're creating mother, it. Yeah, my mother's trailer's still standing right now. Like even even when I go there and just, you know, pass by and just look at it. I'm like, wow, like, you know, we came out of that. You know, a lot uh, of people can't, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, you just pinch yourself, <laughs> right? like. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I, I just remember just being in my little square box of a closet room listening to Tupac, like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be yeah. somebody. I'm gonna, you know, to my mom, I was like, boy, you crazy. But then, you but it's crazy nowhere. because now you're like the Tupac to a lot of right. kids underneath right. you. And I want to say again, if you haven't, pick up the book, Adversity for Sale. Jeezy, I can sit here and talk to you all day. For I know sure, you have sure. so many interviews yes, to get yes. to. My last question would be for you today. What is your greatest fear? My greatest fear would be is, is, is to let myself or my people down. And I don't put that weight on my back, meaning that I'm not allowed to make mistakes, mm-hmm. meaning that I must continue to grow. I must continue to, to to learn. I must continue to teach. And if I'm not doing those things, then I'm failing, right? Mm. And that's what I fear. Mm. You know, I, I, I fear not being who I was put on this earth to be because I can say this real quick. Out of all the stuff that I went through in that book, and everything I didn't put in there for, you know, Real reasons, <laughs> statue of limitations. <laughs> um, God always made sure that I was straight. He always put the right people in my life. He always aligned me with the right things, and that just really made me understand. Like, bro, this is your purpose. You couldn't. Ba- I couldn't bag groceries. That's that's my <laughs> you know that's my saying? greatest fear is missing my God given purpose it's that God purpose. put yeah. on this earth for each of us to have. Because there's a reason why you're still here. Right. It's because you had his favor. Right. And when you understand that, you are called to a higher standing. Yes. And, and, and you have to you have to allow yourself and give yourself permission to do so. And, and what I mean by that is like there's nothing else in this world that I could do. Yeah. <laughs> you feel yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, dude, I couldn't bag, I couldn't park cars if I tried. You know what I'm saying? You, cook, you couldn't cook a, a good meal and be a there, chef or yeah. something, right? Did, well, well, it's a, a barber. It's a few things I cook, but it was, you know. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to go to Jeezy for a lineup. You know what I'm saying? I could do that better, but but he, but he blessed me, and I want to continue to bless people. And again, I don't want it. I'm I'm not perfect by far. Yeah. I'm just walking in my path. I'm walking. I'm walking with faith, and uh, and I'm understanding every day that that. 
he doesn't give me another day just because I need it. He gives me another day because someone else needs it. Absolutely. And that's why I'm in. And we're going to leave on that note because that sure. was amazing. Everybody, for sure. adversity for sale. Make sure you guys pick up the book. It is so good. So good. Thank you. Thank you, Jeezy, for stopping by. Tapped in. Thank you for this book. <laughs> Uh, dang, I should have bought my copy so you could have signed it. I, I just I bought my you. notes. I'm going to deliver one person. I okay, got you. Okay, thank For you. Sure. It's Tapping with TT, everybody. It's Young Jeezy. Thank you so thank much. You thank you. For sure.